this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the Dynamic Shield for the Arduino Duo. The Arduino Duo is built using the newer 32-bit SAM microcontrollers. This means that it's far more powerful than the original Arduino Uno or Mega. However, one issue with it is that it runs at 3.3 volts and is not 5 volt tolerant. While more and more sensors and add-ons are being made that can also work at 3.3 volts, it can still often be a real headache because most systems are made to work at 5 volts. Dynamic Shield is a board that fits over the top of the Arduino that gives you a lot of options for interfacing with sensors and servos. The first cool thing that it does is it level shift a lot of the due signals up to 5 volts for you. This allows you to use standard 5 volt sensors and servos with the due microcontroller. It also has standard 3 pin headers for all of the pulse width modulation outputs, a number of the regular digital lines, and all of the analog lines. The 3 pins have ground, power, and digital or analog signals on. This makes it really easy to just directly plug in a regular servo. Please watch the video on how to use the dynamic shield with the regular servos if you'd like to learn more about this. You can also use the three pin headers to plug in Robot Geek sensors. Robot Geek and Grove are frameworks for modular sensors and actuators. For both of these different systems, you can buy commercial, off the shelf parts for a lot of different things that just plug in and can be used. For example, you can get RFID readers, inertial measurement units, GPS systems, potentiometers, LCD displays, and so on that are just plug and play ready. Dynamic Shield also has a number of Grove connectors. One for the Do has Grove connectors for serial lines 2 and 3. It also has connectors for two different I2C lines. You can hook these up to the Grove I2C hubs to add even more capacity. It also has a number of analog and digital Grove connectors as well. There are a lot of Grove modules available commercially, and they are really easy to use. I'll be demonstrating how to use some of the Robot Geek and Grove modules with Dynamic Shield in other videos. Dynamic Shield also has the ability to control Dynamic Cell Smart Servos. Dynamic Cell Servos are kind of the Cadillac of servos. They're networked using a half duplex transmission protocol. This means you can connect them up to each other in a chain and talk to each one using a network protocol to both send control data and to get important data back, like the current position, speed, and load of the servo. This is really useful feedback information for robotic systems. The fact that the Dynamic Cell is half duplex though means it has a single line for both transmitting and receiving data, so you can't just plug it directly into the serial line and control it. For the do, there's also the additional problem that it's not 5 volt tolerant, so you'll need to level shift your signals as well. Fortunately, the Dynamic Shield does all of that for you. It level shifts the serial lines and then uses a tri-state buffer to convert the regular serial lines into a half duplex signal. The Dynamic Shield can control AX, MX, and XL smart servos using a serial network and the software library that's provided makes interfacing with the servos a snap. The Dynamic Shield has a power connector for a standard 2.5mm barrel jack. You can use this to power the Dynamic Cell servos, the shield, and also the Arduino board directly. It comes with a jumper that controls whether the power from the shield is fed into the beginning of the Arduino. To use this to power the Dynamic Cell servos, you would use a 12 volt input. Another nifty feature of the shield is that you can use jumpers to control the power distribution of the servos. Each of the Dynamic Cell connectors has a jumper that determines whether they get power from the shield or not. This gives you the option of using a set of hubs with isolated power supplies. For example, let's say you need to control 30 Dynamic Cell servos. That many servos would draw a lot of current. I've used the Dynamic Shield with 22 servos at the same time, so the board itself can handle a lot of load. However, at some point it makes more sense to distribute the power. You can do this by taking off the jumpers to get power from the shield and using a hub. You can plug a battery into the hub and it will only power the servos connected to that hub. Doing this, you could connect 10 servos to each hub and use 3 smaller batteries for each one, instead of one large battery all going through your main board. You can also choose how the power is distributed for regular servos as well. There's a jumper that lets you choose whether to use the regular 5 volt output or the power input to the shield. Another option is that you could take the jumper off completely and connect up a different independent supply to it to power regular servos from one source while powering dynamic cell servos from a different source. It gives you a lot of options. Finally, the board also has two resettable fuses for the 5 volt and 3.3 volt power coming from the Arduino. These are safety nets to make it harder to burn out your Arduino if you try and pull too much current through it. When they get in an overcurrent situation, they will temporarily shut down until they get cooler again. So as you can see, the Dynamic Shield gives you a lot of options for interfacing servos and sensors 
to the Arduino Do for whatever project you're building. If the Dynamic Shield is something that you might like to own, then please support my Kickstarter campaign so I can get them produced commercially and make them available. Thanks for watching.